Hey, what's up guys, I'm KBHD here, and today we're gonna to be talking about 4K Explained. So you've probably heard 4K tossed around quite a bit in the past couple of weeks or months, especially during CES at the beginning of January this year. 4K has been sort of a buzzword, but what does 4K mean exactly? Well, there's not a whole lot to technically explain, but there is a lot to it. So 4K is a resolution, really, and it's measured in pixels, just like every other resolution. Starting at the smallest, you can see smartphones nowadays, the average smartphone is about 1280 by 720. So that's a 1280 by 720, we call it a 720p display. Your average laptop, say, which has a slightly bigger display, is typically somewhere around 1440 by 900, somewhere around there. Then you get up to the larger desktop displays, and these are usually around 1920 by 1080. These are called 1080p displays. 4K displays are somewhere around 4,000 pixels across by 2,000 pixels down. Now I say somewhere around that because 4K actually varies. There isn't an exact standard yet, but the closest thing we have to a standard for 4K is called UHD. And UHD stands for ultra high definition, and that is 3840 by 2160. That is a lot of pixels. There are more pixels on a 4K display than there are seconds in three months. So if you're gonna try to count all these pixels, you're gonna take a while. Now in terms of pixel density, I already did a video about pixel density, but we already know that basically the higher the pixel density of a display, the better it looks, the more clear, the more sharp it looks because there are more pixels for you to look at to make the image look good. So this also depends on the distance you are viewing that item from. So we'll start off with smartphones. If you're looking at a 1280 by 720 display, a couple inches from your face, you don't really use your smartphone that far away from your face, so you really need it to be a high pixel density because I'm pretty close, I can see a lot of pixels if it's bad. So given that we hold these guys a foot or less away from our face, I'll give the average smartphone an average pixel density of 300 PPI, or 300 pixels per inch. A laptop, since you hold it further from your face, doesn't have to be quite as high a pixel density. So if you're looking at maybe a 15 inch laptop with that 1440 by 900 resolution, you are looking at a pixel density of about 120 PPI, which is good because it's already, you know, two feet away from your face now, so you can't really see all the pixels at 120 PPI, so 120 is pretty good for a laptop. When you get to a huge display that you're sitting kind of far away from, like a 1080p 55 inch TV, you get to a pixel density of 40, 40 PPI. Now that seems low because, you know, we were just talking about 300 PPI phones, but sitting 10, 10, 15, 20 feet away from it, you're never gonna be able to see those pixels at 40 PPI. So it's a really high crisp resolution display, but that's just 1080p. Now I'm sure you've all, as a kid, or at least sometime in your life, walked up to a TV and looked at all the red, green, and blue pixels. That is called the subpixel matrix. Basically when you're looking at these pixels, those are the colors that make up the images that you see on your TV. In order to see those, you had to get up like all the way up to the TV and look at it from a couple of inches away, and then you could see all the pixels. With a 4K TV, you will actually never be able to see those red, green, and blue pixels. A 4K 55 inch TV comes in over 100 PPI, which means you can be inches from it, like a laptop, and still not be able to see the pixels. Standing five, eight, 12 feet away from a 4K TV will look flat out, incredible, really, really sharp. Now, I don't have a 4K TV personally, but I saw a ton of them at CES 2013. You might've seen my video recap of that event. If you haven't, it's down below the like button on this video, but there were a ton of 4K TVs playing 4K content, like videos and video games on these TVs. And everyone who walked by pretty much paused for a second and stared at it because it was that awe striking. It was really good looking. It's almost like a little bit below that level of looking through a window. It, it's just sort of a surreal sort of realism you get, especially if you have a high frame rate, a really good 4K video looks incredible on any 4K TV. Now, the first problem with 4K TVs is that they're a little bit expensive. Okay, not a little bit expensive. They are really expensive. Not six, seven thousand dollars I'm talking new car, 25,000, 30,000 US dollars expensive. So these are crazy, out of this world expensive right now. But again, we saw them on the show floor at CES for the past two years. That's kind of where this sort of innovation starts. And maybe in another two or three years, it'll be in our living rooms. But the other problem with 4K, at least right now, if you want to call it a problem, is that there's barely any 4K content. Remember when we saw 3D TVs at CES and they all had those awesome 3D videos and the 3D glasses, but nobody makes 3D content. Well, Sony's sort of pushing the way for more 4K content to be produced and there are some awesome cameras out there, I have a link description below, that will shoot 4K. So Sony's pushing the way, a lot of big companies are sort of following behind and making you know, it easier for you to get 4K content into your home. Even if you don't have a 4K display, it still looks really good on a 1080p display and a 2560 by 1600 display. So basically what that means is, you know, TV shows aren't 4K today, 
But if this keeps up, you know, the past two years have been good. If they keep going, it's gonna be really good and hopefully we'll see some awesome 4K stuff in the future. So the largest hub out there right now for 4K content is of course the internet, specifically web video like YouTube. But the thing is, people who are going out and shooting videos on the Red Scarlet and the Red Epic and 4K cameras, putting it on YouTube, it gets compressed way down to, you know, 50 megabits per second tops. The bit rate gets lowered, it gets compressed, and you don't get the full quality of it watching it on YouTube. That being said, I have a video linked in the description below where you can watch a 4K video on Vimeo, and Vimeo seems to have the sort of clearest compression or littlest compression at all, so you can watch that video on your display, I guarantee you it's gonna look great. And you can leave a comment below if you enjoyed it. It's a pretty great video. And the, it's just really, really crisp and clear. You can see every little detail in everything. So if you wanna watch 4K content, the web is the place to be. YouTube, not so much, but Vimeo is a great place to find it. Also, fun fact, when you view a 4K video on YouTube, there is a button just for 4K. So you know how you see 240p, 360p, 480p, 720p, and 1080p, there's a button that says original for anything over 1080p. So if you upload a 4K, 5K, 8K video, you get a special button. So yeah, there you go, that's 4K explained. It's pretty basic, but again, it's pretty awesome. I'm hoping someday in the future we'll have, you know, 4K displays in the palm of our hands playing 4K games. We saw Nvidia's Project Shield, which was outputting 4K video from a handheld console to a 4K TV. So, you know, that's a step in the right direction. Hopefully we'll see more stuff like that very soon. Let me know if you guys are excited for 4K or if that's so yesterday and that 8K TV at CES is the future. Either way, thanks for watching guys. And I will talk to you guys in the next video, which will get started with the long awaited Hackintosh Pro project. That's finally getting started. So thumbs up if you're ready for that. Thanks for watching. Peace.